Welcome to the Newsmakers Podcast. I'm Billy Hollowell, and this is a show where we go behind the headlines every day to bring you an interview with a pastor, entertainer, politician, or other notable news figure. And this is a show, again, it's daily, but it's based on our weekly TV show, which is also called Newsmakers. You can watch it on the CBN News Channel and also on our YouTube page. And on this show, every day, we dive deep. It's a little more longer form with one of the people who you will often see on our Newsmakers show or across the CBN News platforms. On today's Newsmakers, a spokesperson for Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Tal Heinrich, joins us to talk all about Israel's fight to stay alive and to respond to calls for a ceasefire, that and more, right now on Newsmakers. So just to dive right in here, world leaders increasingly questioning some of Israel's operations in Gaza. Why do you think the narrative has turned the way that it has of late? Well, Israel has taken unprecedented steps in the history of urban modern warfare to uh, elevate the suffering of the civilians in Gaza and to make sure that what we see is the minimal uh, civilian suffering and civilian casualty on the Palestinian side. But this is this is what Hamas's strategy is entirely based upon. They want to maximize the civilian suffering and civilian casualties in Gaza because they, they they want Israel to take the fire for their vile actions and methods of war using civilians and urban structure as uh, shields for their war machine. And they want the international pressure to be used as leverage against Israel in a way that will let them stay in power, live another day, and carry out another October 7th massacre. So uh, I, I, unfortunately, many around the world are falling for their trap. Uh, they are playing right into Hamas's hands when they do so. It, what message do you think it sends when people say we need an immediate ceasefire and those terms? I'm sure Israel would be you know, amenable to that if the terms made made sense. What do you think that message sends, though, when the the sort of responsibility is placed on Israel and not so much on on Hamas? It serves their strategy. It serves their war machine. It incentivizes, in fact, people don't realize that, Billy, but in, it incentivizes the use of Hamas, of, of Palestinians as human shields. It incentivizes their, uh, you know, uh, stealing of the humanitarian aid because they see that this is working. They see that international pressure could be applied on Israel this way because of their actions and and again and let them live another day and stay in power now regarding a ceasefire there will be no ceasefire in gaza one that uh keeps the hostages in in, in gaza and uh, hamas in power that is simply unacceptable we took this decision as a nation that we will not live next to this terrorist enclave we defined very clear war, war objectives that hamas must be gone and all terrorists must come back home and that gaza can never pose a terror threat to us again well, and that's and that's when I said that the terms being amenable, you know, the the hostages that has been a mainstay of the strategy of Israel, obviously wanting to rescue those hostages, bring them back. What do we know at this point about the number of hostages who are still alive and who are still being held by Hamas? So overall, uh, one hundred and thirty four hostages are still uh, being held captive in, in Gaza as we speak. Time has run out for 36 of them. Um, as far as I know, uh, I think that's the accurate number that we have on our end, uh, unfortunately. Uh, but all of them, they must come out. We keep hearing horrendous accounts from the hostages who returned back home <clears throat> in November. We know for a fact that some of these young women in captivity are being sexually abused, being treated as slaves, sometimes being held in you know homes of, of Palestinian civilians even. Uh, when we have uh, precise information uh, about the whereabouts of hostages, we we take action, as you know, when we've had some successes, but we continue to pursue both the diplomatic avenue and exerting very heavy military pressure on Hamas to try to yield another framework, which will see the release of uh, more hostages. But so far, uh, the more flexible Israel has has gotten in the negotiations, Hamas just, you know, they they, they hardened their positions. 
Well, and one of the big things that eyes are on right now, obviously, the U.S. response to all of this, uh, U.S. President Joe Biden uh, had a call with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and, you know, pressured him, pushed him on an immediate ceasefire. What was the reaction or what is maybe the comments on that call, um, how Israel and Netanyahu are reacting to that conversation? Biden and Netanyahu, they had a good call as far as I know. And uh, Washington and Jerusalem do see eye to eye on the necessity to eliminate Hamas and to bring all hostages back home. And while we're working on accomplishing these uh, war objectives, we want to make sure, again, that there's minimal civilian casualty, minimal civilian suffering in Gaza. Following the conversation, there was also a uh, our war cabinet convened last night, and we decided to open additional crossings, uh, the Eris border crossing in the northern part of the Gaza Strip for the uh, flow of humanitarian aid, uh, and uh, to use the maritime port of in, in Ashdod also to to increase the the, the capacity of aid that's uh, available uh, available to come in. But again, the the problem is not getting the aid inside Gaza, and we keep saying it. the The challenge is to get the aid around Gaza, and the 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 fact of the matter is that more food trucks are entering Gaza now, daily, during the war, after October 7th, than before Hamas uh, has waged war on us. That is the, those are the facts. Well, and, and let me ask you this. What if U.S. policy did change as a result of, of the war, a disagreement maybe with how Biden is seeing it? How would that impact Israel and what Israel is doing in Gaza? You know, Billy, and I think I told you this before, support is great to have when you're fighting a war. You, you want moral clarity. You want global support on, our, on your side. But we're not fighting for support. We're fighting to stay alive. We're fighting so we can have a better future in the region for us and for, you know, the, the Palestinians, should they choose to, uh, you know, should they choose the path of peace. So uh, with or without international support, uh, including uh, American support, we will do what has to be done because we we will not die. We will not commit public suicide. We will fight a war that must be fought for our survival. Final question for you, and I appreciate your time. I know you're, you've got a lot of media interviews today and this week. Um, obviously, Iran is very concerning and has been at the center of a lot of what we've seen happen in this chaos all the way down the line from October 7th before and after. Um, what is happening in terms of preparations? I know there are some concerns that Iran, Iran is stepping up their threats against Israel at this point. How is Israel preparing for the potential threats there? So you're right. Anywhere you look around the region uh, where you see bloodshed, where you see terrorism, you see chaos, uh, you'll find the footprints of, of Iran. They're using their proxies, if it's the Hamas, the Hezbollah, the Palestinian Islamic Jihad, the Houthis, uh, militias in Iraq, the same militias that target American bases. You know, just uh, over the past week, we had a, a drone launched from uh, Iraq uh, targeting a target, a military base in, in Elat, the southern city in Israel. So anywhere you, you look, it's it's Iran pulling the strings behind their axis of, of evil. And they're so dangerous now. Think of how much more dangerous they could, they could get if they ever acquire nuclear weapons, which will never allow that to happen. So uh, we are prepared. We are prepared, Billy. Um, and we will fight our enemies, uh, you know, with the prime minister just before one of the war cabinet meetings this week, he said, anyone who tries to hurt us, anyone uh, who threatens to hurt us, we will hurt them. It's as simple as that. We don't have to uh, say everything that we do uh, on air and on the record, but we do a lot. Well, I appreciate you taking the time, joining us and giving us these updates. We look forward to having you back soon. That's all for today's Newsmakers podcast. Be sure to tune in for the next episode of the show and also head over to the CBN News YouTube channel and the CBN News channel to watch Newsmakers every week. We'll see you soon.